Good morning, Mount Olive. Uh, today is the Good Samaritans Devotion Day One, and we're excited about today's devotion. Uh, a little tired. You're always tired as a preacher. I'll give you something. You're always tired as a preacher on Monday morning. So uh, I don't know why that is. But anyways, we're going to get into this Good Samaritan parable story, and I'm going to give a background. And I hope and pray that you see something in this that you've never seen before. So I want to share a little story with you to kind of introduce the character of this uh, story question and question and answer session. J. Vernon McGee says this, I heard a little story about lawyers in our judicial system. Two lawyers were in court. It was a very difficult case and there was a great deal of controversy. The court opened and lawyer number one jumped up and called the other lawyer a liar. You liar, he's a liar, judge. The second lawyer jumped up to retaliate and called the first lawyer a thief. Judge, he's a thief, he's a liar, he's a thief, he's a liar. The judge banged his gavel for silence, silence in the courtroom, and said, now then, since all the lawyers have properly identified themselves, we will begin the case. And I like that story because we're going to be dealing with the lawyer today. So we hope and pray that uh, you get something different out of this Good Samaritan's parable. Let's open up our PowerPoint and let's get right into it. So here we go. And now. Okay. So. We'll get started now with our Good Samaritan's parable and background. The scriptures come from chapter 10, verses 25 through 28. Here's what I hope that our ministers will continue to remind us of. The Good Samaritan is actually an answer to a question. It's Jesus being a teacher in a classroom, kind of, so, so to speak. And so the Good Samaritan is an answer to a religious question. And we're going to talk about that question. In other words, it's how can I be saved? We're going to talk about that more today. The purpose, the purpose of the Good Samaritan story, and this is what you need to remember as we go through the devotions, is one cannot be saved by works or the law because we all fall short in some way. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The purpose is to illustrate this idea in the life of a lawyer. Galatians 2 and 16 says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we ourselves, this is, the Paul said, even I have believed in Jesus, that I myself will be justified solely by the faith in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ, and not by the works of the law. And Paul was somebody who could really say that, right? We learned in our last devotion that he said he he was blameless by the law for by the works of the flesh shall no for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified remember as you read this good samaritan story it's the answer to a question and the purpose of this story is to show this lawyer that he cannot be saved by his own works or by his own goodness the themes of course today is loving god and loving others and we're going to see how we are to love others and when we love others, we're showing that we truly love God. Grace, unmerited kindness towards somebody else. Healing, how Jesus can come and heal the wounds with the oil of the Holy Spirit in us. Empathy, how that this man stopped his day and cared for, the Good Samaritan stopped his day and cared for the one in need. As Jesus came from heaven and he walked with us and he cared for us and he died for us. Redemption is going to be found as they pay the price. So I hope our ministers bring these out. I know they will. And then of course, the overarching theme is racism, prejudice, social injustice. You know, as, as he shows the racism in this uh, lawyer's heart, we're reminded at the state of our nation today, and it's always back and forth. And we must understand and be confident that the gospel message is the only message that can change the racism, the prejudice in our communities. Jesus Christ and his message and the changing of the human heart 
is the only answer for the racial tensions that we see today. And this is a story that points that out. It's a, it's, it's a great story, okay? All right, so let's get uh, five minutes in. Let's get into the scripture. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up in the midst of the crowd. Now, lawyers are those who would be in the courts and synagogues. So focusing on that word lawyer, it is one who would teach, interpret, and debate, and study the law of Moses. So this guy was an expert in the law. Uh, and so he's here. Look at the next part of the verse. He stood up and tempted Jesus. Now this tells us that this man was truly not seeking truth. He did not really want to discover God. He wanted to trip Jesus up. He wanted to discredit Jesus. He wanted Jesus to give some unusual answer by their traditions that the people would turn on Jesus. So this was a conspiracy. And so he was led by the other Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes to stand up and try to entrap Jesus. So he, answered, he asked this question, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The first supreme primary question, even during this coronavirus, is how can one live forever? How can one have eternal life? That's deeply seated in my heart. It's deeply seated in your heart. No matter what tribe, whatever culture, whatever nation, they've always had that question. How can one live forever? How can one have eternal life? And that's what he's asking Jesus. In other words, the question that frames up the Good Samaritan is, how can I be saved? That's what he's asking. Uh, now look at, in his question, reveal something about his heart. What's he say? What shall I do? There you go. This man, and I know our minister is going to bring this out. He felt like that he was perfect. He was the cream of the crop. He knew the law, and he was obeying the law. There was nobody more right with the law than this man. So that's the backdrop. His salvation to him was based on his own performance, his own works, his own religion. And we know that's not true. That's definitely not true. And so Jesus, who hasn't been to the cross yet, that kind of puts the shadow of the cross is still looming over Jesus. It's getting larger, by the way, at this point. The shadow of the cross is still looming over Jesus, getting larger. And this man comes to him and says, what works can I do to be saved? And Jesus is saying, there's nothing you can do. You can't do anything. All right. So that's kind of the theme. Let's keep moving. Verse 26, Jesus answered him with a question. What a great teacher, the Socratic method. Okay. You answer a question with a question. So Jesus asked him a question. Let me ask you something. What is written in the law and how readest thou if you know old testament uh, and jewish tradition this lawyer would have had a leather pouch and in that leather pouch would have had selected scriptures that he was to read and meditate on every day and in fact there's two important scriptures that would have been in every jewish man's pouch deuteronomy 6 and 3 and 6 and 11 and we're going to learn about this in a minute so jesus says what's written in your little pouch how do you read that you want to know how to have eternal life? What is in that little pouch that's written for the law? First of all, I want you to know something. The way for eternal life is clearly being communicated by God through the power of his word that we hear preached and we read and we're doing devotions on, but also in the demonstration of the life of Christ, the instructions in his word, and then the demonstration in the life of his Christ. He loved us so much. He didn't just leave us with his word, but he sent his only begotten son to come and live out the way to eternal life. Jesus said, I am the life, didn't he? Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There, I got it. So Jesus is eternal life. It's, it's not a concept, it's a person. And when we have Jesus, we have eternal life. All right, so uh, let's move on now. So how do you read it, Jesus said? Read them, read them little things there in your leather pouch and tell me what it says. And here's what he answered and said to Jesus. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and then thy neighbor as thyself. Those were the two scriptures in Deuteronomy 6 that would have been listed in every pouch of the lawyers or the, or the religious Jewish men. First of all, he says vertically, you've got to love God. Now, he gives us some, 
some descriptors here, doesn't he? Love him with, first of all, love thy God. It's a personal relationship. It's, it's not a far and distant relationship to some God that we can't know. It is a face-to-face -face relationship daily. And you have today a face-to-face -face relationship with God. He is your God. He is personally involved in your life. He is not a dead Savior. He's living alive and well. He's in your life. He's in your heart. He is with you right now in this moment of coronavirus. He is your God. The God of the ages is your God. It's a personal relationship. And then he says, love him with all your heart. That's your inward affections. There's no affection in my life that takes my heart from God. That's a key point. There's no affection in my life that pulls my passions from God. Love him with all your soul. That's your emotions, your emotions, your feelings, and your will. What I'm going to do today. How I'm feeling today. My emotions. Yeah, they will not deny that I love God. And then it says, love him with all your mind. That means the thoughts, what I meditate on, what I understand, what I reason, my intellect, the thoughts, no bitterness, no, no, no uh, thoughts of revenge. Those things don't come in my mind, right? No, uh, no emotions of anger. You know, those things shouldn't come in because when I'm acting out in those things, I'm not really loving God like I should. Love him with all your strength, everything in you. So first of all, TJ, are you loving God vertically? Your God face to face with all your strength, every part of your person, every part of your person, every part of your day, are we truly loving God? And then secondly, from the vertical comes the horizontal. The vertical empowers the horizontal. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Now notice one thing here. He didn't say love your brother only. He didn't say love your bro brother and sister in Christ only. He said your neighbor, next cubicle, next room at school, next door neighbor, friend, foe, or enemy. Love your neighbor. That's what he says. Now, I got something written down here that says the vertical empowers, affects and empowers the horizontal love. So that's what it tells us in 1 John 4. Listen to this. Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is of God. It is his essence. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. When you love, you show that you know God in a personal relationship. Verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, us dirty, rotten sinners, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Now listen to this. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. How can he love God whom he hath not seen if he can't love his brother who he has seen? We have this commandment from him, that he who loveth God loves his brother. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. That's what the Bible says. So if a man wishes to have eternal life, he's got to love all of his neighbors with the same love that God has loved him. Love for God is a love that affects our daily walk because we demonstrate that love by loving others. This is the Good Samaritan. Remember this, loving God, loving others. This is the theme of the Good Samaritan. Loving others, no matter what state they're in, proves that we have a love for God. And what you're going to find is this good Samaritan has been the object of racism from this Jewish man who was on the road that got hurt. No, no doubt this Samaritan man had, had been uh, seen issues of prejudice in his life from these Jewish people. And so he should not have, by man and earthly standards, have helped this guy. But he overstepped those prejudice and racist uh, intentions towards him, and he loved his neighbor as himself. You're not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to talk about yourself. You're not going to betray yourself. You're not going to gossip on yourself. Love others, no matter what state they're in, as yourself. And that's what we see in the Good Samaritan. That's, that's what we're going to see, okay? i got to close up shop today. But this is good. This is a good teaching. I, I love the Word of God. And so uh, Jesus said unto him, you've answered right. I see a little sarcasm here. You've answered right. Huh. Now, see if you can go do this and live. Jesus, so this man, what you're going to find is this man, even at this point, thinks, okay, I'm all right. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm all right. And Jesus is getting ready to say, he's setting him up here. 
all right, if you can do this, you can have eternal life. But you're not going to be able to because Jesus in this story is going to expose that this man is a racist towards others. He has a hard time loving those on the fringes. Let's go to God in prayer today. God, we're so thankful for your, the power of your word. And as Hannah of old, we want to come to you in prayer. And God, I want to pray for every one of my church listening. As you moved on their hearts yesterday, give them the courage and the boldness to follow up with what your word said to them yesterday. We're doing this, Hannah. We're praying right now, God, for the desires of our heart. Forgive us of our sins because we don't deserve you or this platform of prayer. But Jesus gave us this platform by the power of his cross. And by his blood, I come before the supreme and most high God. And I pray for those, God, that we preached to yesterday that have some big problems in their life. But, God, you're a big problem solver. So I pray as I pour my heart out, God, with love, that you would begin to move in those lives, in those moments. God, I pray today that we take this word to your heart, that we realize that we don't put the pressure on ourselves to perform because it's not by our own works, God, that I'm saved. No, sir, it's by the power of the cross of you, Jesus, that you died in the power of your blood, and I need to find my assurance of salvation in the work of the cross alone. God, we pray we take this devotion to heart, and we love you supremely today, God, with, with everything in us. We pour our hearts out, and we love you with everything. And God, I pray that you help us love others, even those who are not like us, even those who are on the fringes, even those who may not deserve it. God, help us love others as ourselves. Open up this devotion, God, and change Mount Olive. Change us, Lord, through the power of this devotion. We love you, Lord, so much. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Have a great day, Mount Olive. We love you, uh, and we pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful day.